At first, it started with a small bit of pain at the base of the neck, and then eventually, as I'd be driving the car, all of a sudden my head would go to the left, and the only way I could get it back was to take my hand and push it back. Howard Thiel suffers from spasmodic torticollis, a painful disorder caused by hyperactive muscles that twist the neck and can permanently tilt a person's head to the front, back, or side. About 150,000 Americans suffer from this condition. You want to hit the machine? Where's a pipe key? Dr. Schantz wondered if the toxin paralyzes muscles, perhaps a tiny amount would relax overactive muscles. Ooh, I love boy. to hear that. Buddy? Deep. At one one thousandth the lethal dose, the deadly toxin becomes a healer. Yep. Ah, that's a good spot. Yep. Good. One left. In the minute I got my first injections, the pain was gone. I mean, it was just, uh, it was a great, great feeling. My life had been given back to me. It's ironic when you take a toxin that can kill people and all of a sudden it's saving lives. It's ironic and it's, it's a great thing. Clostridia botulina are strange organisms. Under the right conditions, they grow quickly into large populations. Then the cells destroy themselves, the bacteria die, and the deadly toxin is released. To start a batch of toxin and complete it for medical use, it takes about three weeks. And in that time, we can prepare enough toxin to supply the medical profession for many, many years. And all of it in a tiny tube, as you see on the bench. There is promising research that botulinum toxin will help millions of people suffering from conditions associated with hyperactive muscles, such as Parkinson's disease, cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, and stuttering. In the meantime, botulinum toxin has become very popular among plastic surgeons like Rhoda Narens. She uses tiny doses of toxin to remove the traces of worry and squinting without a scalpel. It doesn't hurt much, but it isn't cheap. A single treatment costs over five hundred dollars. Where are you recruiting from? Frown for a minute. Okay, relax. Relax. Do it again. Not a lot. Relax. San Francisco is proud of her bread. Distinctly sour with a golden crust. Legend has it that miners ran off to look for gold, forgetting all about the half-made bread dough they'd started. Later, they discovered it tasted very different from other batches, sour. They didn't know it, but bacteria would become the flavor of the town. Sourdough bread is made from a special sourdough starter. At Bodine, the same starter, or mother dough, has been used every day since 1849. Willie Jazif, has been a baker at Bodine for 33 years. We put flour, water, uh, mother dough, and we mix for 10 minutes. That's a normal uh, fermented dough. It's normal with flour and water, and the mother dough uh, is refreshed every day. Uh, from a piece of dough, you, you duplicate it for tomorrow, and that makes the bread sour. If you don't have the mother dough, you don't get no sour. No one knew what exactly gave sourdough bread its flavor until 1970, when researchers from the United States Department of Agriculture uncovered the secret of the sour, a unique strain of lactobacilli bacteria. They named it, as you might expect, Lactobacillus San Francisco. For so many years, people produced this product really not understanding what was going on. Now, scientifically, we understand what is actually happening to produce that loaf of bread. The art is now melded with the science. The steam out of the oven comes and, and, and all that flavor, all that smell, you know, people get all 
Mmm, so good. It's everything. Mother though, San Francisco, the fog, the bacteria, uh, the climb. A glass of milk, a slice of cheese with your bread, call on bacteria. If this is a machine for turning grass into milk, its gears are bacteria. Trillions of bacteria are at work in the first of four stomachs in a cow. As they do in us, bacteria convert feed into nutrients, which eventually become milk. When the milk is used to make cheese, bacteria play starring roles. Specific bacteria provide the different flavors of cheese and put the holes in Swiss cheese. We put it into a warm room at about uh, 70 to 74 degrees, at which point the propionic bacteria form gas, and the gas accumulates and we have eyes. Sounds pretty good. A little solid over here. There we go. Smell that. Nice eyes. Primo. And then there are the bad bugs. You've probably heard of necrotizing fasciitis. Maybe you know it better as this. Flesh-eating bacteria. The villain is a group A streptococcus, the bacterium behind strep throat. It's commonly found on skin and in throats and usually doesn't cause problems. But another strain can kill with frightening speed. 11 people died in England in 1994 from a type that destroys human tissue at a rate of an inch an hour. Outbreaks of the disease swept through the headlines and popular culture. Please tell us it's nothing. Uh, he has necrotizing fasciitis from the alligator bite. Oh, my God. Ooh, what is this, oh, my God? What is this, oh, my God, fasciitis? Is this what I think it is? Is, is this the, the flesh-eating bacteria? Yes. Oh, my God. It infects 1,500 people a year. It may be comforting to note that more people are hit by trains than by this bacterium. Or maybe not. Now is not the time to panic. We have a lethal strain of streptococcus from an unknown origin. Three patients are dead. The health marshal's in my office. When would be a good time to panic? These are invasive diseases. Infections that occur when strep enters the bloodstream, lungs, or muscles. It's the kind of thing that suddenly killed Jim Henson, the creator of the Muppets, in 1990. Who gets these deadly strains of Group A strep and why remains a mystery. Today, doctors at Children's Hospital stated that one of the children allegedly poisoned by Jack in the Box hamburgers died this morning from complications. Uh, his heart could no longer support his blood pressure. Researchers know more about the disease caused by E. coli. In 1993, four children died and more than 700 people were sickened in the Pacific Northwest after eating undercooked hamburgers from a fast food chain. The cause? A bad cousin of the harmless bacteria living in our intestines. According to state health officials, there are over 100 cases of E. coli poisoning connected with this case in western Washington alone, and there could be more. This bad E. coli lives in the intestines of cows. It gets in ground beef if the parts of the cow are not properly cleaned and separated during meat processing. Adequate cooking, however, will kill the organism. Only a small percentage of bacteria may cause disease, but these pathogens have caused untold human misery.